point. Thank you. Here you can clearly see the different film strips I've been talking about. The three different movements, single individual frames, most clear. That perforation holes just happened. And now we are, we, are, we are gradually moving over to the second part of the film, where I want to show that film is a film strip a continuous, long, physical object moving as a film strip. And for, to show that I use the gallows, where Tuka is going to be hanged, and instead of using my, my nail cardboard, I use a, a cardboard without nails, where I shift the film while it, it's being exposed. Yes, double layers, yes, like here. Yeah, good question and an important question. If, if I understand the question correct, the question is how do I get the frame line in as a where it is if I use several, several uh, image sources? Um, these pair of nails don't go through every single perforation hole, but just one, perfor as a one perforation hole right here on top of the frame. And this is how I know where the frame line is going to be. You understand? So, so if, if here a frame starts, I, t I take the first pair of perforation holes to put it on, on my cardboard. Here's frame number one. Here starts the frame. Here's frame number two. Here's frame number three, four, five, and so on. Uh, I'm, so the question is, how do I get the different frames from different scenes? by simply uh, superimposition, one by one, one up, uh, up on top of the other. Again, to make this clear, this is important. I have set raw unexposed footage lying on top of my cardboard. Then I take scene number one, which I want to copy on top of that footage. Then I take my laser pointer or flashlight or whatever and copy what I want from that scene number one. Then I take film strip number one away and instead I take film strip number two and lay it on top of the same raw unexposed, by now a little bit exposed, film strip. And I do the same thing again. Number three, and so on. Yes, we had one, the question is how I make freeze frames or how I slow down motion. Yes, we had one sequence where I slowed down motion. I took uh, the first frame and I copied the frame by moving it along my cardboard, let's say, 12 times. And then I take frame number two, continue where I have left off. Ah. So you see several superimpositions with a shifting frame line. Tuko. Now he's trapped. We see a, a, a pigeon being trapped. We see his fantasies. And he starts swinging on his real gallows, which is the film strip. Again, fantasies. Fantasies of dying. 
fantasies of escaping, like the deer here, jumping on a, on, on, on a horse and a pigeon flying away. But he's still swinging on the film strips. And here now we have for the first time what, I, what the real instructions for a light and sound machine. This is a countdown. We all have seen it before for a projectionist to know when to, to open the gate of the projector and to show the film. Nine, eight, seven, six, and so on. And here it's used as a, as a, wie sagt man so, Zielscheibe? A target with bull's eye, bull ball, a bull eye target. <laughs> and and, and um, Clint Eastwood starts shooting at him. Not at him, but in his direction. This is a universal leader. Um, it's about one meter long and it contains a tremendous amount of really important informations, not for us, but, uh, but for the um, people working in the film lab. We see here roll and length, roll number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. A regular uh, feature film would consist of something like uh, five to eight rolls. In the case of uh, Warner Producto Cattivo, it was eight rolls. Length means um, how long is the individual roll? Uh, is it color? Real number? This is the real number. Now we are real number. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I have no idea what picture means. Wait, I know what picture means. Ratio? This is an issue here in <laughs> at Picunan. <laughs> Ratio would, would, would indicate the size um, of the projected image. It's the classical ratio is 1 to 1.37. Uh, the most common ratio nowadays is 1 to 1.85, so much larger, of course. And cinemascope ratio is 1 to, to 2.35. Sound, of course, Dolby S Air or was it mono or whatever? And these are signs which I don't understand. Head means um, you have head or tail leader. So on your reel, you have uh, some leader. And whether it's head means as when it's if it's head, it's the beginning of the reel. If it's tail, it's the end of the reel. This is tremendously important because if the projectionist does not know if he's dealing with the real head or tail, he might show us the whole film backwards. Don't ask me, it's, but it's beautiful. So uh, here I copied those two instructions head and, and that uh, tiny little something um, to indicate his head, of course, and to show uh, Clint Eastwood where to shoot. Here again, we have some little bit of, this is the laser pointer. This is the classical uh, um, uh, trace of a laser pointed uh, uh, image. This is the size of a single movement with, with the laser pointer. Here I see, for example, the D. Here I copied the D. Here I copied the A. With 16 millimeter, if I would use 16 millimeter, it would be much larger, of course, because you have a much smaller image and, and 35 millimeter, it's quite, uh, quite laborious to fill the whole frame. <laughs> and now he starts swinging on, on the film strip. In the original film, this is an extremely short sequence. Uh, I think may maybe eight or ten frames, which I copied over and over again and mirroring, as you can see. This is a pornographic material because if you hang somebody, sometimes he gets the last direction, including uh, an orgasm taken from a, 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 a normal eight. I think it was normal eight uh, uh, 
actually this is a, a lesbian pornographic film. This is a, a wie sagt man, dildo, a dildo. <laughs> you, you can see the breasts here of, of, the, of the woman here. So and it, that moves on to, don't be surprised, tail. Here, here is a scissor, which is a sign for the, for the editor in the editing room, which is being inserted in the original negative to indicate where he or she should uh, cut. Here it's used as a metaphor for castration, because what could be more, um, in a metaphorical way, speaking in a metaphorical way, uh, castracious, may I invent that way? <laughs> castracious, <laughs> have a good time up there <laughs> by tra translating castracious than being hanged. <laughs> so here, <laughs> again. And now, and now of he's dying. <laughs> and of course, um, he's not dying by being shot because we all know that Eli Wolosh made many films after Il Buon del Brutto del Cattivo. He's dying the filmic death, <laughs> which is when the film <laughs> tears apart in the gate. Yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman asks uh, where that um, cut comes from. Um, this is made with a scissor. I simply, I simply cut the film strip and I copy or print the uh, cut out film strip. See, I used uh, a, a scissor which you can buy for children uh, to, to, to cut the edges of a, of a photo, analog photo, to get, give it an ancient look. You remember, we all know that, uh, so that, that's why we have that Ticket line, sagt man das so? Jagged line. I develop the material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another important question: If I develop the material, yes. Once that process is done, I take the now exposed uh, film strip, one meter, fifty frames, two seconds, and and hand process it. One meter, yes. Step by step. And after processing, I go to the light table in the other uh, corner of the room and look what mistakes are made. Sorry? <laughs>